on the wire in association with Ladbrokes. Well, what a fantastic festive feel we have to this on the wire sponsored by Ladbrokes. We're going to go through the four days at Leopardstown, possibly the best Savills chase in living memory, maybe even ever. What an unbelievable race uh, we have in store at Leopardstown, arguably the finest track in the world. And we're also going to be joined by Dennis O'Regan, um, who is just retired and looking forward to life after being a rider. That's all coming up on On The Wire. Just before uh, we get going with the lads, we will talk to Dennis about uh, his life post-retirement. Nicola McGeady from Ladbrokes, who is one of only two people on the show. I'll give you a bit of a hint who got the memo today in terms of festive dress. Nikki, how are we? Great to see you made such an effort, Johnny. Seriously, a suit like, you know, it's basically Christmas Eve. But yeah, I'm good. Feeling really festive, as you can see. And I uh, can't wait for the racing this Christmas. Do you enjoy Christmas? Do you think, do you like turkey considering it's probably the blandest, driest, most unimaginative meat that there is? Honestly, I am Christmas. I literally love every minute of it from buying presents, wrapping presents, Santa coming to dinner. And obviously the debauchery after after the dinner, um, and I've got three year old twins as well. So uh, Christmas is now peak excitement. And for the Ladbrook staff as well, this time of year, like the twenty sixth in particular, so much uh, racing. It's a very very busy time, and you've got to think of the workers as well, slaving away to give us the odds. Yeah, I mean to be fair, there's such a buzz, you know, with the racing team in the office around Christmas and and in the shops as well. I mean, I, most people really love it actually. Right, stick with us and uh, we will give you some um, special offers. Actually, do we have special offers at the moment? Yeah, so just specials, race, uh, New Year specials. We like to always kind of look to what's going to happen in 2024. We've picked out, you know, some focused on some of the Irish trainers, etc. As so Willie Mullins to be top trainer at the Chatham Festival and Aidan O'Brien to be top trainer at Royal Ascot. That's three to one right now. Aidan O'Brien to... Train a winner on dirt at the 2024 Breeders' Cup. He's eight to one. Will he win all five English classics in 2024? That's 14 to one. So yeah, on the website, you'll see a whole list of New Year's racing specials that you can get stuck into. Um, but they're the key, key Irish ones and the Irish are having a brilliant time of it. So I would imagine maybe we'll see one of those land along the way. Yeah, Aiden only became the winning most trainer at Royal Ascot this year. So that three to one, I'm sure, is going to be snapped up. Right, let's get on to the show. Very shortly, we will be joined by everyone else and Dennis O'Regan. Yeah, so as you will see, it's a. Uh, oh, there is Dennis. Dennis found a hat. Hey. Dennis, out of, look at oh, that Dennis. out of nowhere. <laughs> no, lads. There's a little, little surprise package. <laughs> You've just you've just really really obsessed your. What age is your child? Uh, he's six and and two. I have two of them here, and uh, the two of them are kind of nearly asleep now. So it was time to rob the hat. <laughs> arguably, arguably, you are the biggest child of them all. I gotta gotta let the listeners arguably. and viewers know. The last time I met Dennis O'Regan, he was still a jockey, and I said something to the, to the effects. I think we were in Mallow, and I said something like, "Have you have you retired yet?" And then, like, I by the way, I still think there's a bit of life in you. And you replied to me, Dennis, something to the effect. Great, Johnny. Coming from you, that means a lot with this long <laughs> that, that, That's more or less it, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it, Johnny. Yeah, I thought it was. A, I thought it was a, a compliment coming from you, and uh, you know, I've always enjoyed your um, your little sharp notes on the side there, all along the way. You know, every now and again, really, that's really lovely. entertaining, Johnny. That's lovely. It's again, it's yeah, getting me on the back foot straight away. Very, very hard to tell uh, if Dennis is actually meaning what he says or not. Which brings us on to Mark Boylan. How are you, Mark? All oh, good, Johnny. And we're, I'm definitely not retired for the time being. I have a lot more, hopefully, <laughs> time to go if they don't boot me out before then. But uh, I've achieved half as much as the man on my right hand side of the box. I'd be very, very happy. The music never dies with Don McLean. Don, where are you over the Christmas? Um, I'm here, yeah, at home. Uh, so yeah, good family day, Christmas day. Then stuck into racing from Stevens Day on, like everybody, I'm sure. But yeah, it's a it's a good time of year. Yeah, we we enjoy it here quite a lot. Uh, and the racing is unbelievable. We're going to get straight into it now. Uh, let's get on to the two twenty on the twenty six Boxing Day, Stevens Day, whatever you're having yourself. This is the Racing Post Novice Chase, and maybe Mark Boylan. This is all about one facile Vega. But right at the moment, if you want to back something else in the race, you're getting big odds. Very much so, Johnny. I'll keep it brief. I think Fasal Vega will win. 
I liked what he did at Navin for all that he wasn't foot perfect. But I would remember the El Fabiolo, the Arca winner last season. When you watched him at Fairy House, you look at the comments that were made on the back of that run initially, not flawless in the jumping department, a few novice errors. You know, it can happen first time at lower fences. I nearly rather if a horse does have to maybe get in and make decisions on his jumping rather than meeting Everton stride perfect every time. I think it'll take some beating. Uh, in terms of each way bets, if you're, I don't think this race could fill. It's nine to two uh, in the pocket. He's been supplementing into the race for ten thousand euro this week. Uh, nine to two each way. It's hard to kick him out of the frame if you're that way of mind. But I think Plaza Vega will win. Yeah, and just just on the race, Don. I mean, you, you can look at some of the others in the race. Some very very good horses here. at Bigish price. We get the price shortly off Nicola. But is it a one horse race for you? Ah, look, you can understand why his favourite Johnny, um, he was a top class novice hurdler last season. Obviously. Um, I think it's interesting that connections are supplementing in the pocket. Like he, he, isn't he, heard. he ran well the last day. He stayed on behind Fasil Vega. It never really looked like he was going to get to him, but there was a lot to like about the way that he that he stayed on. He was a wee bit out to his left as well. So that was his, that was his first chase. Obviously, like Fasil Vega's, you'd expect Fasil Vega will come on. You'd expect in the pocket will come on as well. Like he was a high class and I was hurdler last season. And I think that at the start of the season, I was kind of thinking in the pocket might be he might. Be able to step out and trip to two and a half miles because he's, he's bred for stamina um at Cheltenham last year they weren't i think it was when the ground turned up soft that's when they definitively decided to go for the supreme novices and not the valley more but he's a great one winner he came and he was able to drop back and trip or stay at two miles and win the top novices hurdle at entry over two miles and that's obviously a sharp test but i, I think he's interesting against facile Vega. i think he might get a wee bit closer to him than he did the last day and the caveat being that if he doesn't beat him this time, I think you know there is always the option to go out to two and a half miles with him. What do you make of it, Dennis? Oh, I think I think uh, I couldn't really disagree with any of your sentiments there, lads, about them because Fasal Vega looks a, a class apart. Really, I thought he was exceptional, and every horse of Willie's that won in the past two months, uh, you, you you'd expect them to to improve leaps and bounds because they're they're definitely behind. Uh, in terms of against gardens, they've been they've been about a month or six weeks behind, and I thought it was a lovely performance from in the pocket as well. I thought he jumped fantastic, and I rode against him a few times last year, and he is absolutely high class horse as well. So it'll be a very interesting race. Uh, I wonder if in the pocket sat in front of Fasil Vega this time, could he out jump him in the jumping stakes? That would be the the big the big thing. Um, but at the same time, you would. Uh, improvement from Pascal Vega, and uh, it'll, it'll be tight now. It'll be tight between. Uh, we just lost Dennis for a moment Maybe there, but yeah, you know, we just we, Dennis could just get his Wi-Fi back there. I wouldn't put you off Monbeg Park at forty to one with Labricks each way here. I think if he goes to race now, he is he has other entries. What are the odds, Nikki? Yeah, the super talented Fasio Vega, uh, you know, we've seen made a brilliant start to Benson's last month at Nav and beating in the pocket and is rightly the massive favourite here at 8 to 15. One of the bankers of the home meeting in the pockets 9 to 2 to try and reverse that form. I don't see it. You know, Fasio Vega was incredibly talented her and hurler by all accounts will follow the same uh, path here. He's so popular uh, already. He'll be popular in the doubles, the trebles, the Akas, and I can't see much opposition to him on the day. Yeah, let's see how it works out. He's a, he's a strange enough kind of action, Fasal Vega, but it just won't, makes you wonder how good is Marie Nationale, who obviously left him for dead at Cheltenham last year. He goes for a beginner's chase. Let's move on to the juvenile hurdle. We don't have odds in this. It is a grade two contest. Start with you, Don. This, this is a hell of a race as well. I mean, it's very early days for these juveniles. I think maybe the best the best that might be in Britain this year. We shall see, but what's your take on this one? I'm not sure about that, Tony. Uh, no bird at road looks good, and he was a, a handicap winner at Royal Ascot last season. Or, sorry, during the summer on the flat, mm. and his two runs over hurdles have been good. He settled better at Cheltenham last time, but I think that the juvenile hurdles over here are very good, and we have a few unknown quantities as well. Like Mighty Bandit, he was really good at point just down. The way that he quickened, the way that he came away from Lark in the moment or in the morning. I know Lark in the morning made a mistake at the last, but he came right away from him, and that was his first run under any code. He, no runs in bumpers, no runs in obviously point to points, but first run anywhere. So to do what he did, the Son way of that he order did Saint it, George. The son of order of saint george as well yeah so like plenty of salmon in there as well and i think he's a he's a half brother to akalak i think who finished third in the triumph hurdle so um yeah lots to like about him plus jack kennedy and gordon elliott afterwards they seem to be really impressed with the performance that he put up and that was the day on which stateman won the morgan hurdle he clocked a faster time than stateman 
So mm. it, like, and, and that that was kind of consistent throughout the race. We put them side by side, and it, th there was no anomaly there. Like it wasn't that State Man stood still at the start for two seconds or anything like that. It was a it was a truly run. It seemed to be two well run races. So it was a big performance by Mighty Bandit. And look, I know he's short for this, and he's he's fairly short for the time hurdle as well, around about eight to one. But he just could be, and it's more the way that Gordon and Jack were were about him after the race that after he won they kind of seemed to think that he was a real live triumph hurdle candidate so he's interesting is it as simple as that mark Boylan? this uh favorite who runs in these colors uh the mighty colors who was so good on debut is it as simple as he wins is he the triumph good thing for you is there more depth to this race as willie as don alludes willie has five in it and um, not all gonna run you'd imagine but a lot of kind of dark ones there yeah, very much so. And this year, race last year was seriously informative for the division with Lossie Mout beating Gallum or so. And even your horse like Nuzzard in behind, Risk Bell, you know, it was a season shape in Formula 9 and I expect it to be similar again. Point and point of view in this type of race, I would rather take the evidence you'd learn from this and, you know, use it going forward if you fancy something in a triumph or, you know, for the rest of the season. I just think at the moment, if you're if you're steaming into something here, we don't have the full deck of cards. Like if to look at Carges, uh, Philly there for Kenny Alexander. Obviously, same sort of idea maybe as Gallum or so who was second in this last year. You know, the vibes seem to be positive about her when we did Willie Stable more than earlier in the year. He mentioned her as a best possible triumph candidate. But at the same time, we, we, we don't know just yet how, how good she is, how ready she is. Um, you know, Mighty Bandit could be really, really smart, but, you know, we don't know. We haven't seen enough uh, evidence yet, I suppose, of the overall juvenile division to, to give a strong view. So, look, at, I'll probably sit on the fence a little bit here. I'm going to probably use this, watch this race with a view to the future. But if Mighty Bandit does end up being a proper grade one horse for division for the rest of the season, it wouldn't shock me one bit. We'll stick with Mark so for the first big race of day two at Leverstown, the Paddy's Wards Club Chase. Mark writes for the Irish Field. You'll see his stuff uh, over the uh, Christmas period. Um, to be honest now, this is a race that doesn't really get me get my juices flowing in terms of the quality of the horses in it. Captain Guinness was, was very good, to be fair, at Navin, Mark. Um, likely favourite. We'll get odds shortly from Nicola, but what do you make of it? Yeah, I actually thought Dino Blue was, was a bet here, Johnny. Um, I really liked what she did last time. I think she's upwardly mobile. and she is. She looks improved. Captain Guinness, I have to... Yeah, I, I think that she, you know, in terms of mayors go, I think the vibe came from Willie's this season that she was one of them that had stepped forward considerably uh, from what she had shown last season. Um, I'm not rating the form hugely highly, but exactly as Dennis had pointed out earlier, you know, time of year that these you know blue and the likes of those Harwin and Fasa Vega, they that is not peak Willie Mullins time of year. I think we're just about to meet that point of the year where the horse begin to blossom. And I just thought at the prices. Uh, she was the one that had that little bit more upside, as well as that Captain Guinness. I think you know two one around here. I, I wouldn't be worried about him in conditions. I think he liked the ground, um, but I'd just be I think stamina wise with him. I'd nearly rather be a one mile seven chaser than a two mile chaser. Um, this was really good, but how good was Dice Art Dynamo on the day? I'm not quite sure. And Riviera to tell uh -huh. can be can blow a little hot and cold, but I'm not going to knock Captain Guinness for the sake of it. But I just thought at the prices, I'd rather have a look at, uh, at Dino Blue. I think she's she's progressive. At least you could say she is definitely going the right direction. What are those prices, Nicola McGeady? Yeah, I very much agree with you, Mark, and all of that. We, we're actually seeing a good spread of money. Captain Guinness, five to four favourite. But Dino Blue will obviously try and challenge for favouritism at nine to four right now. Dino Blue is a big talking horse. We know that from Mullins Yard. She won three on the bounce. Now, most recently, the Barber's Ten Castle Chase there at Navin last month, beating Field Door. I just, like Mark said, you know, she's a really promising horse on an upward curve. And I think she looks the value out of the two. Captain Guinness, obviously, you know, swerved the Tingle Creek to come here, but, you know, he made a winning return to it. Nav and Henry seemed delighted with him. So, I mean, I don't feel strongly about either of the front two. I'll just probably go with the value in that being Dino Blue. I'd be with Captain Guinness, Don. I just think he's the best horse in the race. What do you make of it? Yeah, I, I probably won't have a bet in the race, Johnny. Um, I do like Captain Guinness. I've been a fan of his for a long time. And I think it, it's very astute piece of placing. He was in the Tingle Creek. They didn't run there. They've sidestepped that to come on here. Al Fabiolo and John Bond both ran in the, on that weekend. John Bond in the Tingle Creek and Al Fabiolo, or Al Fabiolo in the Hilly Way. And he's come on here. It's a big opportunity for him to get his grade one win on the board. I think he's the right favourite. I can see where Mark and Nicola are coming from with Dino Blue. Like she's seven pounds inferior on official ratings. She gets seven, the seven pounds mares allowance, so there's nothing between them on official ratings. And she comes into the race in good form. And Field Door, who she beat the last day we saw there at Nice, he ran well against Al Fabiolo in the Hilly Way chase. So I thought that form was probably enhanced. By him, I, I, I'd be interested if Appreciated took his chance here. I'd be interested in him dropping back down to two miles and going left-handed. I'm not sure he's going to go here, though. But mm. um, And Gentleman the May is in there as well. 
on his first run back. It's hard to know what to expect from him. He was disappointed in the first run back last year, but it was it was earlier in the season than than this is. So I, I think it's an interesting race, um, but probably a no bet race for me, really. We tend to agree, Dennis. If you were re- returning to action uh, over the Christmas, and thankfully you'll be able to chill out this Christmas, what would you ride in this? I'd definitely ride Captain Guinness. He's the best horse in the race, um, and he looked so impressive at Navin. And I know he loves Navin, but it was his superiority in Navin I thought was very impressive. Riviera to tell is no mug now, and I know that Philly from a from a, a good a good while ago. Um, no, I'd be all for Captain Guinness. I think the track will suit him, and I think he wants the extra furlong anyway. Uh, nowadays, he's getting a bit older, and I think Henry will have him in peak form for a lap or so. Let's go back to Nicola for the odds for what for me is definitely one of the races of uh, the festival. This is the Paddy Power Future Novice Hurdle Grade One contest of hundred grand, one forty five on day two, and um, so many of these that are going to become proper horses, Nicola. Yeah, this is just pure Elliot Mullins showdown. Um, down memory lane is an interesting one for Gordon. I think the seven to four favorite right now. He's unbe- unbeaten now in three starts. But then you have Daddy Longlegs who ran such an eye catching race at Thurless last month, beating the field by thirteen lengths. But it is uh, the favorite down memory lane who's attracting the lion's share of support. We've had money for him this morning as well. Um, and then after that, you've got Firefox in there at five to one. It's for me six to one. Fire and Glories. 8-1 to one alongside Il Atlantique. Just the quality of that performance, Don, from down memory lane and the swagger of it. Yeah, that's it. It's um, it's the, the the style of it, isn't it? Um, he was so good in winning there, and he's won, his, he's won his point to point. He won his bumper last season, came out of Dan Royal, won that maiden hurdle. So we just don't know what he could be. Like He, he could be very, very good, and... Gordon Elliott seems to think an awful lot of him. Daddy Longlegs, as Nicholas says, was really impressed with winning at Thurless. But again, it depends what's going to run here. Like Firefox, it was hard to mistake. Again, we're back to what trainers and, and jockeys think of horses. Like when he won, when he beat Ballyburn at Fairy House, that was a massive performance. And I Gordon think Elliott, he'll go to Nace, will he? The, yeah, probably. But he's, he's one to keep an eye on. Like when, when um, Gordon Elliott had the 1 2 in the Royal Bond hurdle on the same weekend, and he's still nominated Firefox as the one the novice hurdle to take out of the weekend for him. And it's for me, like he was a really good novice or bumper horse last season. He finished a close up fifth in the Chelton bumper and probably disappointed at Punchestown then. But his, his, his hurdling bow, that was a really good performance, I thought, because he was free early on. He, he, he wore a hood for the first time that day, but he was still keen. And he's he sat in behind Caldwell Potter. He took it off him, and Caldwell Potter came back at him. But he found more in front for Paul Town and on the run. And I, I thought there was a lot to like about that. <laughs> he's gone and enhanced that form since as well. So I, I think it's for me. There's more to come from him. And if if hurdles help him to settle a bit better through his races, which hopefully they will, as he gains an experience, then I think he could be he could take a big hand among the the top novice hurdles this season. Um, not sure he's going to go here. And Brad Day's ahead. She's probably going to go for the Grade Three. Mare's race, I think, instead later in the week. But no, it's a cracking race. This. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, bring you in here, Mark Boyd, and future novice hurdle, Elliot or Mullins. It's going to be Mullins, possibly, but could it be Tom Mullins, whose horse uh, here, um, who was a horse that actually last year was kind of a very impressive facile mode at this uh, at this festival, and um, he actually started off won his hurdle the last, uh, the first day, the last day he ran behind Fire and Glory at Fairy House in a Grade One. Actually traveled very well. He's a hundred to one in a place. I think Labrox are fifties. Am I absolutely mad, Mark Boylan? Probably, Johnny. Probably, Johnny. I don't mean to be uh, the bearer of bad news. Listen, that. he could be. He's obviously, I, I, this time last year, I, I thought he was as impressive as any bumper w- winner we saw at the Christmas festival. So, um, listen, if he was to be able to rediscover that, fair enough. Um, and I'd never, never, ever turn my nose with anyone giving a big price like that. But um, look at uh, this card last year. I think Everton barred a Paddy Power chase. Willie won. I think he won six out of the seven. He had 16 winners over Christmas. I'd just be very, very conscious that when we hit this window, these horses go straight to peak. And I thought Daddy Longlegs was really, really good uh, Irish debut. It was a horse even that at the previous year's uh, stable tour, Willie's, uh, he got a mention then, and they seemed to have played the patient game with him. And uh, I, I thought he was really, really good. Look, down memory lane, he has that X factor about him. Uh, and, you know, it, but it's one of these where if the jockey bookings, I, I think that I would imagine Paul would ride Daddy Longlegs. If he rides this for me, obviously, I, I'm on the wrong one. Maybe I should be... Uh, Jump and ship to something at a value like you think, but uh, I, I was just really thought there was a there was a touch of quality about Daddy Longlegs, and at the prices when you're playing three to one and seven to four, I, I think I'll go with a little bigger and go with Daddy Longlegs. Yeah, there's certainly an X factor about Dennis O'Regan as well. Not beginning with E, Dennis. What do you like in this race? 
Oh, I'm a down memory uh, lane fan all the way. Um, I think he's a top class animal, and uh, I know Firefox might be their supreme horse. Uh, he's obviously top top notch, but I don't think he'd run here. I think he's going to run a name, and I think uh, uh, they'll run down memory lane here. And he was actually in my twenty to follow last year. He's a he's a top top horse. Um, Loved them in down rail, even though he beat didn't beat much. But it's the, they just I love the way that horse is, is is jumps and he's class. And uh, I rode him, I rode him and schooled him a bit last year. And I think he's a high class animal, so he'd be he'd be the one for me in this anyway. What field did he give you? Oh, serious top class now, Johnny. Mm. All the way, I'd say he's a, I'd say he's a proper horse. Um, <clears throat> I rode him before he won his bumper in Fairy House last year. Uh, I thought he was a serious horse. And uh, I have to say, I schooled Firefox before he ran in the Maiden Hurl last year too. And uh, I thought that the, the power and scope and class that he has is phenomenal. And uh, I don't really care what Willie will turn up here with. Uh, if either one of them horses run, um, they're going to take some serious beating. They're two top class animals. Yeah, uh, Adam, the producer, will like the fact that uh, there's a little uh, insert here on the notes which says down memory lane. So I presume we actually were going down memory lane, but it was the horse. We will go down memory lane later on. Um, Dennis O'Regan might go down a bit of memory lane with us now as well and go into the future, Dennis. What is your plan post-retirement? You're telling us you don't actually have one. No, I don't have a plan at the minute, Johnny. Um, I decided just to take my time. Uh, I don't think I'm probably one of the, the very few jockeys that retired maybe and decided not to not to take up a role immediately on, in anything. Um, obviously, I'm just doing a bit of riding out at the moment to keep fit and keep sharp, but uh, not not much. And uh, I have a few little injuries that I need to settle, let them settle down. But uh, I'm, I'm joining forces there with Race and Stay at the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, they're quite a, a big entertainment company. Um, they're they're coming over. They're they they do packages for for people that are coming to the races, and uh, they've a lot of they've a lot of rooms booked out there in the Clayton Hotel, and they do a lot they do a lot for people in packages that want to go racing for the day and other things as well, not just racing. So I'm going to join up with them at the Dublin Racing Festival. But between now and then, um, I've nothing I've nothing planned really. Maybe some media work, you know. Maybe some uh, some tipping. Uh, nothing, nothing too fancy for the time being. Anyway, that's for sure. And we we asked. Offers. I'm open. We, <laughs> as are we all. We we asked for everyone for uh, like a kind of a memory. And Dennis's was actually um, not in the not in the very distant past. But this is living next door. Why did you pick this, Dennis? And it's it's you were. I'll give you your dues. You were a beautiful writer in in motion when things um, went well as they did here. Um, I living next door was uh, it was a very important winner at the time because. Um, I'd gone a little bit quiet in in the UK, and uh, I was flying over and back riding a lot for Tony Martin and John Breslin, and this was Christmas 2014, and um, uh, my wife Louise was with me as well. It was her first time coming racing to Leperstown, and uh, were you thinking of you Louise know, as you came between horses here now? Uh, no, I wasn't, but I was thinking um, I was thinking of the getting the money anyway to win. <laughs> uh, and I uh, beat a horse at Barry Connell's, which led to me, which led to me getting a job for Barry Connell after that. And uh, my wife Louise ended up getting a job in Leperstown after that. So when, when so when we moved back to Ireland, it all kind of, uh, it all reminisced from that great day in the Paddy Power. So um, and uh, there's no commentary there, but Desi Scahill called the wrong horse on the day. And I thought it was very funny. There was someone up in the box afterwards saying, Desi, it's the wrong one. It's the other one living next door. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, called the, he called the other one at Tony Martin's on the day uh, with Shane Chortle. But it, it was uh, it was actually it was Michael at that one. So uh, that was quite funny. But um, uh, to win the Paddy Power was, is momentous anyway. And uh, it was a hundred grand race on the day. And it was just love riding that horse the way I could ride with that freedom, uh, drop in, take my time, be in no panic. And, you know, that was just a typical a typical type of race that I enjoyed to ride. He was a good horse. 
He was a good horse. So was the horse that you beat, Fox Rock. You brought back bad memories. I actually remember I had 100 quid in him at 14s for that race. And Ted Walsh, I met him. I think I was talking to Ted in Tremor, and I told him, he said, geez, that's a good bet. There was an anti post bet at the time, um, the famous Fox Rock. And there was Dennis uh, doing, doing us on the line. Um, but Fox Rock is a good mm. horse. It's now time, though, for the Christmas quiz. And, um, yeah, this is a, quite an exciting part of the show. Since it's Christmas, thought we'd take a little break from all the big race analysis. Now, a bit of a game of... Guess the Christmas jockey. We're going to have two rounds of this, so we've cunningly disguised some famous faces. Okay, so let us first of all go to Mark Boyle and see can you get this, Mark? And I trust Adam to produce the goods here. Here we go, uh, if we bear with us. Oh, Come gee, on, Mark. It's not that hard. Feeling the pressure here now. Uh, is it jockey? Oh, Lord Mead. Lord Mead. First of all, Dennis, that's not the way the game works, right? You know, you have to, you have to just wait. Anyway, what, what was your answer, Mark Boylan? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm informed it's Noel Mead anyway, Dennis, but oh. uh, I was expecting jockeys here. I can't imagine uh, Noel has been a jockey before, but there you go. Am I correct? This is a this there is a bit of a horse like this, like that horse of sharks, iconics that was given fifteen links and sort of refused at the first. That's the way this quiz has gone. Clearly, it's Noel Mead, who of course was <laughs> Dennis's boss for many years, and you might say Dennis uh, modelled himself a little bit on the great Paul Carberry, both of them in retirement now. Over to Don McLean. No prompt in this time, Dennis either. That's me. <laughs> who is th that's a tricky one. Uh, uh... That was Don McLean actually. That is a tricky one. Huh. That's that. The jockey, is it? I can't give you any clues because I actually don't know <laughs> the answer myself. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Can we get the answer from Adam here? Hmm. Don does not know. So Don is on zero. We will get the answer very shortly. Um, oh, there it is. There, there it is, Kate. That is a good one. Much, much harder than Noel Mead, it has to be said. Um, kudos to Adam. That was a tricky one. The great Katie Walsh, who, of course, wrote Thousand Stars to Victory at Cheltenham all those years ago. Over to Nicola McGeady now. There's Nicola. And who is this? This one is pretty easy. Oh, Barry Garrity. Yes, that is indeed correct. And there is great man Barry Garrity. I believe Does we that have mean I'm in the lead here? What's that? Does that mean I'm in the lead here? Uh, you're tight. Um, actually, yeah, I don't. I, I think you are. I am. Uh, Mark, Mark, Mark is don't, right. don't, don't, it, don't be yeah. taking one off me. No. Dennis O'Regan is on no, minus no one though for his behaviour earlier. So let's go to Dennis O'Regan <laughs> for uh, his. I think this one might be a bit close to the bone though. <laughs> 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 At least, uh, at least you can't see my bald head there, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Dennis's unique way of saying Dennis O'Regan, which is correct. So that puts Dennis back on one. And um, there's a photo of Dennis. For what age are you there, Dennis? Twenty, twenty-one. I'd say. About <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> fourteen-year-old Dennis O'Regan. That was um, yeah, that was the first part of the quiz. Let's hope the second uh, half of the quiz is as shambolic as that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have uh, the best bets of Christmas and more coming up from our guests on on the wire. So uh, thanks for sticking with us so far. Right, let's get to the let's cut to the actual chase in so many ways. I'm going to start with Dennis O'Regan. If you were riding Dennis uh, at Christmas, you would love to ride in the Savills Chase, which is on the 28th. As good a renewal of the race as I've seen. We've plenty of VT here in the background. Where do you start, Dennis? Oh, it's Jerry Colomb straight away. Uh... I know I'm sounding a bit more in the Elliott camp, but uh, I did win a maiden hurdle on, on Jerry Callum a couple of years ago. I think in Down Royal, everything that went wrong, that could go wrong, went wrong. Uh, Jack got caught on the outside of Sam on Conflated for a horse to jump to his left all the way. I'd say he lost, I'd say he lost eight, eight lengths uh, in a grade one that's massive uh, with, with Conflated jumping into him and taking him across the track. Uh, to get back up on the line and beat a very well ridden on the day and by Allen, I thought mm. was massive. Uh, huge performance, huge performance. And uh, I think, yeah, I think you'd have to start there. I think the track will suit him. 
the fact that they were even thinking of the King George with him is is uh, you know tells you all you need to know. Uh, I think Leberstown will suit him way better than uh, than Kempton anyway, and I think Alaho. Uh, probably they might have been a little bit nervous of Alaho, but I would say I would say Leprechaun will suit this horse. He's only ever been beaten once, where he was very very unlucky to be beaten at Cheltenham last year. I think this track will suit him. It's a jumping track. Uh, he's going to be fresh and well, and Champion Chase winners have a very good, uh, you know, the John Ryle Champion Chase mm. winners have a very good record in the Savills Chase, and I think I think he's coming in here. I think he's the one to beat. Uh, I think Gallop and the Champs was very not disappointing, but uh, needs something different. Needs some bit of headgear. Needs some bit of sharpening up to some degree. Um, and then you have Martin Brazel's horse, who isn't without a chance. Um, fast or slow, and I was I have been impressed with him, and he's still an underdog even though he's a dual grade one winner now and has beaten the Cheltenham Gold Cup winner twice comprehensively. Um, but I think Jerry Kalam is the one to beat here. I think he's going to take series beating. Uh, track and suit him, great jumper, Gold Cup horse written all over him. And um, yeah, he won't mind the ground whatever way it is. Fascinating stuff from Dennis. I bring you in here, Don. I actually didn't realise until looking back in the VT there how much ground this horse he was he, he was probably jumped across at the last at down wide, but also <laughs> the fact that um you know he he had loads of ground to make up on Ambois Alain, who's one of the horses who takes him on. But but Don, the revelation that Gallop and Deschamps runs here as well was somewhat out of left field and now he's Andy Bo's favourite. Yeah, look, this is fascinating, Johnny, really, for all the reasons. I agree with an awful lot of what Dennis said. I think this is absolutely a better track for Jerry Kalam than Kempton. I was thinking that he'd be vulnerable at Kempton. Um, but that said, he did win a silly odds chase over two and a half miles at Sandown, so maybe he wouldn't have been. But he's look, he's, a, he's, a, he's still untapped, isn't he? Like, he keeps on winning. As Dennis said, the only defeat was by a short head by the real whacker in the Brown Advisory Chase when he just got going late enough. Um, Where are you on Galloping Deschamps? I'm, I'm like Dennis, Johnny. Um, I think he needs to improve again. I, I, I can't. Like, I don't see why he's half the price of fast or slow. Like mm. this was, this was Here brilliant. He go, but this was phenomenal. Brilliant ride with Paul Tan and got him out the back. There's, he's just moving up on the outside of Brave Man's game, and he gets to him. And the two, of, this is a phenomenal photograph and picture down to the last. The two of them see a stride. They jump it in unison. And then Gallop and Deschamps goes on and wins by seven lengths. So it was a it was a power pack performance. You know there is a school of thought that you know says maybe the two horses had really hard races and they haven't come out of it brilliantly. They were both beaten by fast and slow at Punch of Stand, Punch of Stand Gold Cup, and Brave Man's Game in particular. He, like I thought he, he ran well in the Charlie Hall actually, but then the Betfair Chase at Haydock the last day, he was he just he had to he was that must have taken an awful lot out of, of Brave Man's Game, but. Uh, on Gallop de Champ, I think he has to be a wee bit better than he was at Dan Royal or sorry, punch us down in the, in the John Durkin chase. The gra the, the distance was too sharp for him for sure, and he'll come on for his run as, as the lads were saying earlier on. That was kind of late November. Willie Mullins is just starting to roll, so you'll expect that he will come on and will improve for the step back up and trip. But so will fast or slow, like he's a staying horse. He actually ran in the, the two mile race behind Gentleman de May at the Dublin Racing Festival, but then as he proved in the Ultima behind Porak Grammar. He stayed that trip really well. He obviously stayed the Punch of Sound Gold and Cup really well. And here he is, well. the far side, uh, going up the inner of great, great kind of footage here. So JJ Well, Slevin it's a great ahead. ride by JJ Slevin because yeah. he appreciates it's going to his left. And he's, he's obviously spotted that. He goes up his inside, appreciates it again out to his left. He's got the run on the inside. And look, he doesn't win by very far, but he's like he was very weak in the market. Two and a half miles is shorter than ideal. He's gone on. He's going forward again, going to the line. To me, that was a really good run. And he was a nine to one shot that day. You'd expect that he'll come on for that as well. And I just think he's a he's a he's a seriously underrated horse still. And like he's 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 still a coming horse as well. He's only seven. Like like, like Gallop and Champ. He's more likely racing than Gallop and Champ. He's only had six runs over fences. So I think there's a there's a big upside to fast or slow. And I think Conflated might be underrated as well, actually, at a big price. He's back Leopardstown. He loves Leopardstown. He won this race last year, albeit it wasn't nearly as hot a race as it was last year or as, as this year's is. He won the, the Irish Gold Cup as well in February and back left handed back at Leopardstown. I could see him doing better than he did at Down Royal. But I, I think fast or slow should be should be way closer to Gallup and Shop at the market than he is.
I, I'd agree with Don, Mark, and we, we'll see a bit of footage of one of the other forgotten sort of horses of the race here in Apple Tower, but there's an element of with, in terms of the faster or slow um, Gallop and Deschamps narrative, for me, there's an element of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, because he's beaten him twice. I, I really think he should be, he actually should. He's an up-and-coming horse, he's unexposed. I don't disagree with the fact that, that the, maybe the prices, the prices are... are not reflective of where they are at this moment in time but uh, Gallop and the Shams I thought it was a huge overreaction to the defeat you know a race that is put an emphasis on speed over two miles and three and a half furlongs at a time of year where you know Willie Munns aren't cherry ripe and you have you know ridden out, off, off the pace as well it wasn't best position but how the race, pace of the race unfolded like you know there's an awful lot of things you could tweak his jumping wasn't very sharp on the day um, I just thought there was a lot of angles that you know things that didn't go right he's still not beaten all that far like what have you beaten in the end, the length and three quarters? Whereas fast or slow has had that box seat throughout. Like it's not, it doesn't take a lot to make a case for the best jumps horse in training over fences to come back and, and win a great one like this. But I don't think you're getting rewarded at the prices. But um, fast or slow, I think he's caught Gallop and the Champs on two days, where once at Punchestown in April he's over the top after a big race in the Gold Cup, haven't been on the go through the season, and second time around he's caught him in a scenario where the pace of the race over insufficient trip. Has played against him, so I actually think Gallop and Deschamps. You know, I actually I think he will come out and price a little bit, and I think Jerry Colombo short and all the talk this week. I think he'll go off short to the 130 at the minute. Um, crack and race, but I do think Gallop and Deschamps. If you said to me wh- which is these the most talented horse, and definitely with improvement to come, I think it's Gallop and Deschamps. Well, the only certainty about all of this is at least one of us is wrong. At least two of us are wrong so far on this race. Nicola, what are the odds? Um, well, you'd be glad to know for those who think fast or slow is, uh, you know, it is, isn't, you know, it's just too much of a gap with Gallop and Deschamps. Mm. We're going to go top price fast or slow and Jerry Colomb. We just love Gallop and Deschamps. We think he's too big everywhere else. So, um, yeah, this is the race of the meeting. There's no doubt about that. And the fact that Elliot committed Jerry Colomb just added another element of spice to this race. So right now, um, fast or slow is three to one. Jerry Colomb is 130. Um, we will be top price on the day about both of them. Um, but I do, I'm keeping the faith in Gallop and Deschamps. Uh, I think he's going to have a spark back. He's a Gold Cup winner. Um, and I think, yeah, he, he was a bit rusty at Punches Town. He wasn't beaten by far. And um, having spoken to Paul Townend as well, he feels confident in him as well. Of course, Faster Slow is a very exciting horse and will have his fans too. Um, but yeah, we'll be top price. Yeah, Paul, the ambassador for Ladbrokes, will have very interesting views on Gavin Deschamps because of the fact that he's been beaten twice. Um, I, of course, will be looking forward most to Limerick on the 29th because I will be in action there for racing TV. But this is the race, let's be honest. I, I don't think I've looked forward to a jumps race in general anywhere as much as I'm looking forward to this race. Let's go on to the Jack de Bromhead Christmas Hurdle. Um, beautiful to see Jack uh, honoured in this race. And we'll see a little bit of footage here, Dennis O'Regan, of Home by the Lee, who I thought of an unbelievable race at Cheltenham last year and a nice return at Navin into the bargain. Yeah, Home by the Lee is has been a horse that's kind of just... I don't know, just kind of, we never talk much about him and then he mm. just keeps on, he just keeps on appearing on big races and... Here he is winning the race know. last year. He's just a very good horse, isn't he? I, I just, I don't know if Cheltenham suits him if the ground is too good. Mm. Um, I think that's what it is. Uh, he's a funny sort of a horse, unassuming sort of a horse. We never hear much of him, but he seems to love Navin and Leperstown and places like that. I think he's very good in Ireland. I don't know if he's as good in England. Um, maybe he do for me. I mean, JJ Slevin has a very good book of rides there, hasn't he? When you look at it, uh, he he could be riding on the crest of a wave by the time he gets to ride this horse. But um, I just think home by the Lee. Uh, there's some. There's one or two spectacular performances in him per year. Mm. This is probably this, prob- this is probably one of them. Uh, he loves Navin. Came back, lovely comeback run, and. Uh, yeah, I, I you can never rule him out anyway. That's for sure. You could never rule him out, even when you think he's running bad. He's one of them that he'll come. He'll come good with a good performance somewhere. I really like the horse. He's a real stair, and I actually tipped him for the stairs for last year. But I think he just. I don't. Know, I don't know what it is with him. I, he's. He's uh He's a. He's a. He's a funny. He's a funny sort of horse. Uh, hard to know yeah. where you're at with him sometimes. Yeah, I. I really like him. You. You had a bit of previous in the old stairs hurdle at Cheltenham, had you? Uh, the small bit of previous, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good race. Now, uh, back in the era when the stairs was a 
when it was being dominated, it was always dominated by one horse. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, uh, say, um, I was in the Ingalls Driver era, and then there was the Big Box era. Then that came kind of hot on the heels of of Ingalls Driver retiring, and uh, they were record breakers at the time. But I haven't seen a, a horse of that caliber in stairs hurdle since. To be honest, I mean Tia Hoopoo. Uh, Tia Hoopu is the horse, obviously, this year for the Sayers, I would say. Uh, just being a bit stronger and all the rest of it, and very unlucky uh, last year and all the rest of it. But, uh, uh, yeah, like, I mean, Stairs hurdles are hard won. They're hard won, but I haven't, I don't think they're at the level they were uh, back a few years ago, you know, back 10 years ago. Yeah. They, I don't think, I don't think they are now. And that's wouldn't, not to take away from any of the horses that are running it now. 100% wouldn't disagree. Nicola, just show us the odds here. What price are you getting on this favourite? I, I mean, if, if you're ever betting a horse in one and, and this lad, if he's anyway close to second last, he can simply just win. He just finds loads for pressure. But what price is home by the Lee with Labrooks? Yeah, uh, Johnny, home by the Lee has shortened up here, actually, into a levitate from two to one. And there's been more money for him today. Irish Point has also been backed, is in there at seven to four. So there's going to be a bit of jostling there at the head of the betting. But Irish Point stepping up and trip, and that can be tough and top company. Home by the Lee won the race last year. Will relish the trip, and for me, seems the safer choice. Yeah, I was talking to David Jennings, uh, Don McLean, earlier. Um, very, very sweet. David Jennings at the race was very sweet on Irish Point. Now, Irish Point um, is is a rare enough horse by Joshua Trees. You wouldn't get that many of them. But basically, all his form, give or take, is over sort of two miles or all his best form. Um, and he's taken on a proper stare here. How do you, how do you assess the two of them? Yeah, it's interesting, all right. We don't know about Irish Point, how, if, how he's going to fare, stepped up and trip. Um, we know he's very good over two and a half miles. He won his grade one and at entry last year or last season over two and a half miles. And he was good in winning at Down Royal, I thought. And then it looked like the Hatton's Grace Hurdle was the race for him, and that would have been an ideal race for him. But, of course, <laughs> connections ran too poor in the race instead. And that one worked out pretty well. So now he's stepping up to three miles. I, I mean, I, I, think, I think you'd need a bigger price about him to cover the unknown about the trip Agreed. for me anyway i think he's, he's he's tight enough given that we don't know how he's going to fare and as you say johnny he's taken on hardened stairs like home by the lee you have to love home by the lee the what he does and i know he's quirky and he sprang a big shock last year and when he beat bob ollinger but i thought he ran really well back at navin in the list mullen hurdle this season over two and a half miles of trip that shouldn't be far enough from me we know it'll be better over further he's a real staying horse he, he seems to like to do things on his own, like JJ Slevin tends to keep him wide, doesn't he, away from other horses just to allow him to get into his rhythm. But he was a lot sweeter. Remember last year in the Liz Mullen Hurdle, he looked beaten. But this year, he was a lot. He ran a lot sweeter through the race, and even though he didn't win it this year. But I think he could be just a sweetened up horse, given how he how he fared last season. And coming on here, the fact that he's won this race last year over the course and distance, that's a big positive for me. I think Buddy One will be better suited by three miles than he was by two and a half in Hatton's Grace the last day. Um, and they're you know they're fair play, they're right to have a go. But yeah, I, I think home by the Lee is is the right favourite. I think he I think he, he should be a strong favourite. He's by fame and glory, Mark Boylan, who of course would have um, run at Leopardstown trying to chase the ass of see the stars like so many before him, but stays very very well. Um, fame and glory is a massive loss to Stallion ranks. I think um, you know he's he's gotten some really good horses. I love this horse. I thought I thought he was going to be pulled up at Cheltenham last year. Ended up finishing in the money. And as Don said, lovely comeback in Liz Mullen. Yeah, look, it's it's hard hard to knock him in this type of category. Uh, just not the type of horse that if I had my last five in my pocket that I'd be you know absolutely relying on because he can hit that flat spot. Um, you know, I actually think Irish Point for if it ever, I'm sure JJ will be at pains to make this a stamina test to try and draw it out of Irish Point. But Irish Point is a horse that gets me in the head of Marine National in a Royal Bond last year, and I'm not convinced. For all I, I get your point, Johnny, that his form is two miles, some of the better stuff. I, I don't think he's a natural two mile or even at entry. You know, he's he just always shaping like the last part of his race is where he wants to, to go further. Um, I, I, I think probably at the price, I, I have a go at Irish Point. Um, for all that I, I'm aware, I'm going in there with my eyes open that, you know, JJ can try and draw it out of them. Home of the D can do that, but I don't see a big field here. I don't see loads of options to turn this into. I think JJ would have to manufacture it himself. And that's not always easy for ours. So I, I think Irish Point might just have the class to do. Going to stick with you, Mark. Now, I, if you look at Classical Dream, he's four entries at the moment in the Racing Post website. Three of them are over uh, Christmas. One of them is in, 
One of the reasons the Labrook sponsored Coto Star and obviously is Chase. Um, obviously at Kempton on the 26th, he could then uh, he could run in that. He could run in the race that honors Faheen and Guinness um, at Limerick on the Thursday, or he could go to the race that we're going to talk about here, which is the Neville's Hotel Novice Chase. David Jennings actually did tell me earlier. I think they're changing the amount of Novice Chases run in Ireland for next year. Going, I think the race and post Novice Chase might be taken back. So there are a lot of Novice Chases. So classical dream anyway has plenty of options. What do you like in the race? It's really, it's probably of all the race we discussed today, I think this is the hardest one to have a, a full idea of what to be seen here because you say Crasco Dream is more uh, Christmas engagements than you do, Johnny. I think over the next few days, he's he go absolutely anywhere. He is Kempton, he is Limerick, he is Leopardstown. Corbett's Cross is a horse at all. The last time it was a huge performance. Like it was a beginner's chase in name only, proper quality to a three car brag. And I thought he did really well to win on the day. Um, maybe at a bigger price, Favre de Champ do could be overlooked here. Jiggestown trying to win the race for the seventh time in the space of 10 years. They generally have one for this. And I thought he was really, really effective uh, last time in the Florida Pearl. I'm sure Porter, Porter disappointed going right handed. He'd be a different proposition going left handed. But it just in terms of quality, that could you say grade one, hold your hand up? I think Corbett's Cross is the one that, you know, he could be a proper brown advisory horse come the springtime. Um, for what, what he did last time really stood out to me as grade one class. Yeah, Don, uh, uh, Mark mentioned Classical Dream and Froan Porter, who had a memorable clash here with a very controversial start over hurdles in the not-too-distant uh, past. Um, what do you think about this race? As Mark says, it's kind of hard enough to judge what's going to run. Uh, it, it's a hell of a race, Johnny, if even some of them run. Um, a Classical Dream, yeah, I was, I was kind of liking the, his, his going over to Kempton for the Faheen Chase. I think that might suit him. His jumping at Thurlis was very, very good. And look, he's, I know he's a late recruit to fences but Faheen was a late recruit he won a grade one at 12 and um, as you said Willie Mullins doesn't mind bringing them bring them late Sharjah likewise he's not doing too badly and he's what's he 10 I think going 11 um but yeah look I I, I think as Mark mentioned there Fabri de Champ I'm not sure that he got the credit that he should have got for winning the Florida Pearl Chase a lot of the focus after the race was on Florian Porter and correctly so he just was distracted by the loose horse but Fabri de Champ like his run behind Afferdale Fury in that beginner's chase at Galway, and that's a beginner's chase that almost always produces good horses going forward. That was a big run in his first run. After he was passed by Afferdale Fury, he stuck to his task well, and the two of them finished clear. And the last day at Punchestown, he was, I just thought he was really good. He, he was straight and true. He traveled really well for Jack Kennedy. He was the most likely winner from a long way out, and he stayed on well. Now, maybe he's a horse who could go further, but I think three miles or an extended three miles at Leopardstown over Christmas, that's, that's a real staying test. And Florian Porter is obviously obviously fascinating. Like yeah, you can just put a line through his last run. He's back left-handed now, back at Leopardstown, uh, where, where he obviously goes well here, and he's a top top class staying hurdler. Obviously, and I thought his run at Cheltenham on his chasing debut that was a really good run. And Broadway Boy, the Nigel Twiston Davis horse who finished second behind him, he's won twice since, and like he's he could be a brand advisor or chase horse himself. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's this is a fascinating race. It depends what lines up. But I'd, I'd be I'd be keeping an eye on Favre de Champ too if he runs here. We'll get odds from Nicholas Shorty, but just bring you in on this, Dennis. Yeah, I just think uh, Favre de Champ as well. He'd be ridden forward. You know what I mean? He'd be ridden in the first two. You know, which is a massive addition in novice chase at Leverstone. Uh, uh, jumping track like that, you know, and that's ridden in the first kind of two. Always has a chance uh, in a novice. I'm not sure about classical dream. I think he's a very good jumper, but. Uh, Again, I'd agree with Don there. I'd like to see him in Kempton. Uh, Kempton and Suiton. But I'm, even though I think it's great that Willie brings back these older horses to go chase, and I do think they have lost a bit of edge at that stage. Um, they could have been high class chasers, uh, but I think thrown in against younger chasers, uh, you know, a bit like Charger in the, in the, in the Drinmore, different things like that. You know, I, I, I think younger horses will always, will always win. Um, and I love that Corbett's Cross. I, I agree with, with Mark there. I think that beginner's chase in Ferriels was, was a great one. Um, Three Card Bragg is a top class horse as well. So to, to, to win the way he did that day was, was, was very good now. There was nothing in it. And it was a, it, they were, I stood at the last fence actually on that day. And the speed they were going, they were, they were top notchers, as good as I've seen in ireland so this season anyway so i think yeah corbett's cross would be he'd be a real a real good one for me uh, but obviously jack kennedy up near the front now on one of jacks i uh, want of gardens and one of gigginstown there uh, that, that 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 won't be simple 
That, it, there, won't be mu- there won't be much in it. Uh, it's going to be a tight race. Yes, what Dennis is saying that this isn't sold enough. If you can go racing at a track that you can actually get close up to the horses, which is one of the great things about Dundalk, but if you get close up to a horse jumping uh, a fence, particularly the last, and when you have the quality of what was oh. a, a, gra- a grade one masquerading as a maiden, as you say, Dennis. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Johnny, honestly, no, it, uh, it's rare I ever stood at a fence and watched a race because I was mostly riding in races, but it, it, to stand at the last fence that day in Fairy House and watch them three horse, there was there was Corbett's cross, cross uh, three car brag, and there was another real good one in it as well. Uh, Happy start. That's yeah. it. And it was, Jesus, it was, I was blown away by it. You wouldn't see it in, 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 in a grade one anywhere. Beginner's chase, yeah. it was no way, it wasn't a beginner's chase. It was class, top class. And I agree there, but Corbett's cross did really well to win that day. Did really well to win now. And, of course, he had the benefit of a run before that in in Nace, didn't he? He had that run under his belt, so I suppose that stood to him on the day. But I think he's a horse that could improve again because the, he beat found a 50 last year at Nace over hurdles, and I thought that was monstrous at the time. And then he ducked out at the last hurdle in Cheltenham. Might, might not have won, but... That kind of set the tempo going forward for how he's going to be ridden. He'll never again take it up before the last jump ever again. Mm. And he has that bit of class now, you know, at Leperstown to be arriving on the scene. Big wide, big fence. The last fence at was a big lot wide fence, you know what I mean? So he won't have an opportunity to do anything funny there. He'll be keeping tight middle inner defence and... Mark Walsh will know right well exactly to land him, you know, right on time. You have plenty of time from the back of the last of the line, Leperstown as well, on an upward pull. So that'll all suit that horse. Uh, he'd be the one for me now if he can get past. You know, he'll follow. He could follow Jack, you know, because he knows Jack will take him to the last fence. Jack, that's a good horse. Van Voort de mm. he's a good horse. And um, uh, that's, of course, if he runs there. Like, he's, is he not in anywhere in Limerick, I wonder, because he did win that grade two hurdle in Limerick last year, mm. didn't he? Nicola, we're going to get odds from you on this, and we'll bring you into the odds as well on um, the, the potential uh, clash. I don't know if it's going to happen, State, Mer- State Man against Imperial Pass and the Matson Hurdle, but if you get odds for both of those races, if you have them handy. Indeed, yeah. Well, obviously, um, the first one is such a hard race to call. We don't know who's going where, but Cor- Corbett's Cross is 9-4, to four, Classical Dream 5-2, to two, and Flooring Porter is 7-2. to two. I think Grange Player West could be a bit of value, actually, at 13-2 to two as well, depending on where the others go. But uh, he won a Punchstead Festival, proved himself over fences last month at Nace, and just seems to be a horse going in the right direction. And then, of course, Stateman is another Christmas banker, as far as we're concerned, at 2-7. to seven. Only Constitution Hill can get in his way. Um, so hopefully we'll have a nice battle with Impera Pass here if it happens. Impera Pass is in there at 7-2. But I can't see Impera Pass causing an upset for anyone who does. As I said, he's 7-2. And then you've got Echoes and Rain at 6-1. to one. Yeah, only, <laughs> Donald bringing in their only Constitution Hill to get in his way, which is a little bit of a problem. But uh, yeah, what do you make of this? All problem, all right. We'll know more about him on St. Stephen's Day at Kempton and at the Christmas hurdle, yeah. Um, yeah, look, this, our Stateman and Imperial Pass going to meet. I see, I see they're talking about Stateman or Imperial Pass going for the Relkeel Hurdle at Cheltenham mm. on New Year's Day. Is that right? Over two and a half miles? Yeah. It's one way of splitting yeah. them up. Um, I, I think there's, a, there's an argument Willie wants to win the jockeys, the trainer's title in Britain this year, because he's, he's arguably had more runners in Britain so far than he would normally. Yeah, we, he kind of mentioned that. That was brought up at his press day in the early part of the season, and he said, no, no, but... You kind of think that if you know he'll he won't be averse to having runners in Britain, and if come March he's in that position, then he wouldn't say no to it. So yeah, it's interesting. Watch the space. But look, State Man is phenomenal. He's just unlucky. He's born into the same era as Constitution Hill, and it is interesting though that Paul was kind of saying that he didn't think he was at his best in the Champion Hurdle last mm. season, and he might not be as far behind Constitution Hill as he was on the day. Like you know, he and the thing about State Man, he's just. He's so very, he can do anything. Like he can exactly. sit in behind, he can lead the in the Punchestown race in April. There was nothing wanted to lead. He went on and just they played into his hands because Paul Tannen just set his own pace. And here he's coming away from a good mare in Echoes and Rain. He's doing it with his head in his chest. So look, he's a he to me, he he's the he's the standard setter in the Willie Mullins camp. And I know Imperi Pass got beaten in the Hans Grace hurdle, but he was always the one that Imperi Pass had to get up and pass replace as the number one Willie Mullins two mile herder and that's still the case obviously so he's just such a likable horse um you just love to see him getting a 
a clear run now at, at, at the season and hopefully arrive at Cheltenham Concert Pitch and yeah, do some race. Briefly, Mark Boylan. Yeah, no need to delay. State man can't seem getting beaten. I actually think if you're looking at this race, the chance of going to just three or four runners. Um, Echoes and Rain, expect her to rock up six to one, two places. She, if you're if you're into that sort of thing, I think she makes total sense. And that'd be my forecast idea. Um, looking at the Irish point, is other options. Bob Ollinger go to Cheltenham. Imperial Pascal go to Cheltenham. Um, Danny here has entered a beginner's chase as well. Maybe two of them. So don't see a big field and don't see any trouble for State man. Final word on this race to D.F. O'Regan. Yeah, well, the first thing I like to say is Willie's running all his horses in England because there's ground in Ireland. The ground is so heavy in Ireland. That's the reason. He's clever so out. The race is not called off every day in Britain. Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, not, not, not only in recent, only just recently. Uh, yeah. well, well, Willie, Willie's clever. He, he doesn't kill them on the heavy ground. Heavy ground in Ireland is different to heavy ground in, in the UK. Mm. And uh, it's it's bottomless. It has been bottomless. It's been a very bad summer as well. So he's clever. He's not killing... All them horses that got summer grass this year, they, they haven't got, uh, they didn't get a good summer because we had such a bad summer. So, like, he's not killing all them horses very early doors so that he has them when he wants them from Christmas onwards. And that's, I think that's uh, that's why he does that. Um, and secondly, I think Zana here, surely, surely be to God, will run in the champion hurdle and is the value bet for the place pot. Uh, he'll be a big price. <laughs> he'll definitely be third again, um, if not second. And he's, uh, I don't know about him jumping a fence now. I'm just not sure about him now over mm. a fence. Uh, I rode him myself in the champion hurdle last year, I think. Uh, maybe the year before. I rode him in some one of them grade ones. Um, he, yeah, yeah, no, he, he'd be a certainty to get placed. And Stateman is, is a great horse, but... He's a great horse, but I know Paul was saying last year in the Champion Hurley he wasn't as good. Uh, that could be just the feeling. That could be just him, mm. though, at that time of year. You know what I mean? Mm. And that could be the feeling that Constitution Hill will leave you with mm. um, after a race of that, of that, you know, taking on a horse of that caliber. Um, yeah, I think the two of them are bank and banker material there now for Christmas uh, statement and, and Constitution Hill. Lovely stuff. Let's have a quick break. Then we have the second leg of the quiz and our selections, our naps for the Christmas. Right, Dennis O'Regan. He's. I think. He, yeah, we'll put him. We'll put him on one out of one. He's a hundred percent record. Dennis, this is for you. And uh, let's see if you can get this one. Ooh, I Mark know Walsh, it is. Mark Walsh. That's, there's no flies on this man. That just in and out, um, shave a bullock. Literally just yeah. job done. Two, <laughs> two for Dennis O'Regan. The pressure is on. There we go. MP Walsh, the outstanding MP Walsh. <laughs> met, his, met his parents in the Dunraven there for the Limerick uh, National Meeting. Absolutely lovely, lovely people. Let's go over to Nicola McGeady who bombed out. Oh, no, no. Nicola got Barry Garrity. So Nicola could uh, tie for a dead heat here. There's Nicola McGeady. And here is oh that is a tough one i think i know who it is but it's tough um i'll give you a clue nicola no i think i have it okay uh it's not Hayes, is it no the clue is going to be jw which is my initials um oh i've got a complete blank nicola has lost this this is the yeah, I will admit defeat here. here. I only got. I'll take one. One out of two. It's J W Kennedy, I think. Oh God! Let's, let's see. There we go. Who is having the run of his life? Um, clear run of form, no injuries. I, I actually, it's only dawned on me now, Mark Boylan, how outstanding this rider is, and he's only what early twenties. Anyway, Mark, over to you. You bombed out in the first one. Chance to restore some pride here. I did not bomb out. I did not bomb out at you all. Did bomb out. There, were, that one's easy. Come on. I look at Green got himself anyway. I think this is this, yeah, Nina Carberry, the one and only. Well done, Mark. Well done. The one and only, as Robbie Irwin says, about pretty much everyone, the one and only Robbie Irwin. Right, last one, Don McLean. My battery's running low here as well, which isn't good. There is, and the one and only Robbie Irwin. I will see you at Limerick over the Christmas. Here is, ooh, Don McLean. Oh, easy one. How come my two got sunglasses? <laughs> come on, Don. I think this one's easy enough. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it, Johnny. 
It's Ruby Walsh, isn't it? Danny. Danny Mullins. I think it's Ruby Walsh. There we go. Oh. Okay. Right. Let's get the naps of the Christmas. Staying with Don McLean. Uh, fast or slow? I think he's overpriced in the Savile's chase. Mark Boylan. One we didn't get to touch on. I like Panda Boy in the Paddy Power. Huge run last season. He's a few pounds higher. Martin Brazel has uh, more than demonstrated on occasion since then how adept he is at getting these horses to go from one level of form to a considerably higher one for the big day and uh, seven to one for the Paddy Power. We'll take a swing in the big field on the de December 27th at Leprechaun. I'm not sure I asked you this, Dennis, beforehand. So if you don't have one, that's fine. But if, if you do have a nap, fire it ahead here for the Christmas. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I have two? You, absolutely. Uh, brighter days ahead is a certainty, whatever she runs in. And Bally Bun of Willie's that was second to Firefox and various, whatever he runs in, which is probably might be can be just a maiden hurdle, uh, he's a certainty as well. Strong words. Nicola McGeady. Um, Gallop in the Shump will be my Christmas cracker of the week. A little blip on the radar isn't going to put me off, and I think he'll will bounce back in the Savile's chase. I'm going to give Meeting of the Waters, named after the beautiful Sweet Vale of Avoca, who produced a beautiful performance at Mallow the last day. Sneaks in, I think, in the Paddy Park chase. Nice odds at the moment as well. Tens with Labrooks um, for Patrick Mullins and his son, W and his father, rather, WP. If he uh, sneaks in, he might need a couple to come out. But uh, we are now, um, having gotten the naps, we're going to go um, finish finish off here with a few Christmas memories. Um, actually, let's start with you, Don. What is your favourite Christmas memory from the left? <laughs> I had to resort to my third choice after my first two were stolen. Um, but this is a good one. I, I, I thought Apple Tower, when he got up and won what is the Savile's Chase back in, what was it, 20... One Darrow Keefe, wasn't it? Ah, uh, Darrow Keefe. He was so good in him because the two Willie Mullins horses, Ken Boy and Mellon, they went at each other down the back straight. And Apple Tower, he'd never been over the trip before. Darrow Keefe sat still until they really got to the second last fence. He asked for his effort. And here, he's going to finish third. But Darrow Keefe just gets a tune out of him. Kemba has gone on, trades at 1.0 something in running. And Apple Tower, even here, not certain he's going to get there. But, and as we as we know, Apple Tower, a subsequent Gold Cup winner, he, he needed every yard of it. it was, I think it was Darrow's first grade one win as well. So it meant a lot, an awful lot to him and to Henry de Bromhead and Sheevely Park as well even though they're not the, strictly the Chiefly Park colours. Um, no, nah, brilliant. And what, what he'd done before on that blue tire, like he'd, he'd beaten Shackle Persois in the two-mile chase mm. at Leperstown the year before. So training performance by Henry de Brom had to get him there and to win a, 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 a Savile's chase. Now, nah, phenomenal. We've seen Dennis's. Don was going to give Tidal Bay, so I will give Tidal Bay. And what a race this was! Um, I think it pretty much uh, does all the talking for itself. And you know, I guess we're kind of um, forgetting some of the riders that um, you know have retired, including Dennis. Some of the proper proper riders here, but the, just this this image and um, the reaction of Paul Nichols after the race. You'll see him the far side, just getting up some old stagers there. Fleming Star, the near side. Uh, Fleming Star, rather the far side. Watch the left hand ride by one hour Walsh on the far side. This is crazy stuff. This is from the gates of hell. How does he win from here, Johnny? Between horses, Mark Boylan still looking at these the, that the, on the exchanges to see what odds he can get. Mark Boylan, over to you. What is your Christmas festive memory? Just that really was just stuns me when I watch it. You know, you're watching half furlong down. When, when does he win? You know, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, Hurricane Fly for me. You know, going to Leprechaun every Christmas. That was the day I always wanted to go whenever he was there. And, you know, 11 out of 11 at Leper Sound his career, 22 grade ones, just a sensational horse for all sorts of reasons. But this day in particular, you got to see all his toughness. This was his final with the Leper Sound Christmas Festival just before he won the Irish Champion Hurdle. You can see Jeski on his inside here. And it just you can see all the heart that he has here. He's just incredible. He's 10, going to be turning 11 the next week. And he's just t unbelievably tough. Um, and I think, you know, watching these races and watching these horses do battle in this era, you know, it mightn't be absolutely as reflective as you know your brave Inca, Hardy Eustace here, a Hardy ball. Ah, but I think when you had Jeski and, and Hurley and our Connor and these horses, it was still it, it's it's lacking at the moment in the two mile division. And when I get to see uh, races like that and clashes like that, that we can get to see them again and again through a season, I, I always thought that was just brilliant, brilliant to get and watch. But you can't beat the fly. Final word to you, Nicola. 
You certainly can't. That's my favourite memory as well, Mark. Uh, it might I'm if I was my favourite horse of all time for many reasons, like lots of people. But, you know, that battle just showed what fighting spirit he had. You know, that was his 21st grade one win. He would go on to make a 22 world record. So he's just such an extraordinary horse. And that battle where he just pipped Jeske was uh, an incredible race. Yeah, I remember watching that from the stand that day and there was some roar and just seeing the horses relatively up close and how Tony McCoy, the far side, trying to get um, a renewed effort out of jet ski and Ruby just timed it to perfection. He was, for a horse by Monju with his quirks, an unbelievably good attitude hurricane fly and um, very much um, not uh, in racing anymore. Neither the jockeys too, but... Uh, are just great memories um, of Leopard Sound. So it's going to be a fantastic Leopard Sound as ever. We've had Dennis's living next door. It's been brilliant to have Dennis on, brilliant to have Don on, brilliant to have Nikki on, and obviously great to have Mark Boylan on as ever. Check out Labrooks for those specials. That's three to one that Nicola mentioned earlier, certainly uh, one to consider. And Racing TV has everything over the entire festive period, be it on Extra or on the channel itself. Don't miss out. On the wire in association with Ladbrokes. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.